All right, guys, back on the Ram 5500. I, I realize that I keep saying um, Dodge 5500. I apologize. Any uh, Ram owners out there, definitely not trying to offend you if I'm saying it the wrong way. But uh, back to it, as you can see, I got my power probe down there. Got my little trusty snap-on uh, voltmeter um, or whatnot. So I'm pretty much at the point where I'm ready to test the wiring to the VGT actuator. So what's going on is the vehicle has a P0234 turbo overboost code and it has a U as in uniform, uh, uniform, you know, U010C as in Charlie. So U as in uniform, 010C as in Charlie. It's getting that code, that U010C code, which is loss of communication between a VGT actuator slash controller with the ECM. So again, I explained to you guys, this VGT actuator slash controller is a computer of its own. It has its own uh, strategy, it has its own logic, it does everything on its own, it dictates what that turbo is going to do. Now, uh, the ECM, the engine control module, only tells the actuator data points that it needs. For say, um, it tells it what your throttle percentage is when you push the throttle pedal down there, it tells it what the load percentage is, meaning how much weight it thinks it has behind you, the uphill climb, downhill climb, whatever. Um, also, the different temperatures of the of the uh, uh, engine, of the, of the DPF, all of that. Uh, so it lost the communication, so the actuator can't do its own job. That doesn't mean that the actuator is bad, but it lost communication with the engine control module, with the ECM. So that can be either bad wiring, a bad uh, actuator, a bad computer, or bad wiring, which consists of power, you know, power loss to the actuator, power loss, or certain grounds lost to the to the ECM to the computer. Uh, all those things are being dictated by that. So here we go. I need to go ahead and test this just to be sure that before I tell the customer, hey, you need a new actuator, that I'm doing the right thing. He did mention to me that there is rats that will crawl around here all the time, and I can show you because he showed me too. Excuse my power probe wiring right there. Look at this. Do you see this? Rats ate that. Do you see that right there? Rats ate that. You see this wiring right here? Rats ate that. You see this uh, wiring right here? Rats ate that. So obviously he does have a rodent problem here where it's at. So there is a humongous possibility that, that maybe the wiring is bad. So I went ahead and just did a quick visual on the wiring. There it is. As you can see so I did a quick visual nothing looks bad nothing looks like it's it's naked and, and rubbing against metal or anything like that so there's nothing that's that's showing like hey you know what I'm right here rubbing against ground and I'm grounding out as a circuit um, also loss of communication meaning it lost can it lost can bus data to or bus data going from ECM to to actuator so I'm gonna show you how to test that out real quick bear with me as I set this up I need I need to set it up so we can see it. Excuse me if it's a little bit angled. It's the only way I can set up the phone right here. So back to it. So here we go. Um, now, pretty self-explanatory right here. You have the four wires. You have uh, a power supply, which is the orange and, and black right here. And then you have a, a what's called a return or a ground. It's not really a ground the way you think. The computer totally controls this. This power does not come from a fuse or from anything like that. This power comes from the ECM itself. So does the quote unquote ground, but it's not a ground. The purple and, and uh, or violet and black. Uh, it's not exactly a ground. It is a ground. It does ground out the motor that's in here, but it's more of a return for the computer to understand what's going on inside the VGT actuator. So it knows that that uh, uh, it actually gets a signal return there. That's how it knows that the that the motor inside of the actuator is actually working properly, based on the resistance inside that it's already preset parameter 
it sends back a certain voltage back to the ECM and then the ECM is able to determine hey the actuator is still working properly also this actuator does its own diagnosis again it's a little computer all in its own it's the new modern turbos uh, the the Cummins was the first one to get it uh, eventually the the L5P Duramax got it and and also the the newer uh, uh, power stroke six sevens got it so again back to it um, the orange and black is a 12 volt supply the violet and black is the ground slash return then you have what is a white and light blue which is the the actuator low data kind of like a negative and then you have a white with dark green uh, which is the actuator high data which is kind of like the positive on CAN bus data too I'm not going to get into that conversation right now that that can take the rest of the night explaining to you how CAN bus data works I'm really really good at that but nonetheless so on this CAN bus data pretty much you have equal voltage of 2.5 and 2.5 on both ends uh, so nonetheless let me get out of that statement because I'm going to get caught up in there so really quick again this is getting a U10, sorry, a U010C. So it's loss of communication between the actuator and the ECM. Now here's a little tidbit trick that will help you. If the CAN bus data was the problem, you would also have a code for the first knock sensor. Being that the knock sensor 11 shares the same bus data communication as the VGT actuator. So if you had VGT actuator communication loss and uh, knock sensor 1-1 communication loss, then uh, you would most likely have a CAN bus data problem. This one does not have any kind of knock sensor codes or any kind of communication code with the knock sensor. So won't lie to you, that pretty much tells me that the problem is not the CAN bus data. I'm going to show you how to test it right now real quick too, but I know it's not the CAN bus data. So I'm going to go ahead and put my my uh, snap-on uh, voltmeter right there. I know it's a little bit hard to see. I apologize. I'm trying to make it the best I can. So let me go ahead and show you. I already have the tester there. So remember, orange and black is power. So we test that orange and black and we have 12.3 volts. What that means is orange and black is fine. There's plenty of power. Now I can go ahead and test at the at the other uh, at the other one right there. This is the return. There, obviously, you're not going to get anything out of the return. The return is down here. It's number number four. So obviously, you're not going to get anything out of there. But if I use my power probe again, here is the 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 orange and black. You have power 12.3. Now here is the return or the ground. There you go. It's grounded. So theoretically, those are working just fine. And just for the heck of it, so you guys can see, this is what the CAN bus data communication looks like uh, uh, when when testing it with this sort of tester. Okay. This isn't the way you really test it, but this will give you a small little quick baseline. So again, you have 2.5 volts. That's that's on on one of the uh, the light, light blue, the the white and light blue, and then the white and dark green. You have 2.3 volts, which is within tolerance of being considered fine. So the CAN bus data is not the problem. The problem is the actuator itself. The actuator most likely, uh, when it gets hot, it starts losing communication because I erased the code and the code did not come back on, but they've already erased the code too and the, it eventually goes back into limp mode over time. So that most likely, I've seen this hundreds of times, uh, once the actuator gets nice and hot, it's most likely losing uh, communication. So the, the, the that aspect of the actuator probably is, is 